Oh, good evening. Yes, I'm back on another micro adventure. <laughs> back at Harold Park Estate Forest again, where I was in the last one. Same exact site, too. <laughs> site 211. Uh, just getting out here for another overnight trip here. So so close to home, why not? A little, a little soggier this time, but... Oh well. Anyway, I've got about half an hour or so of light. So I think I am going to take a little walk around the campground before we settle into the campsite for the evening. Just to go around, explore what the place is. Something I didn't do the last time I was here. Last time I just kind of stayed at the campsite and didn't go anyplace. So today we're going to go for a little walk around the campground and just see what the place looks like. One of the things I really like about this campground is that they have water spigots at almost every site. I don't know if they're at every single site, but I, I know most of them have water spigots. <laughs> And I think that's fantastic. Just an added added bonus that you get here, because you're not paying any extra to have a water spigot here. It's still $17 a night there for, at least for people who live in Massachusetts. It's like a ridiculous $54 a night for people who don't live in Massachusetts. So sorry to all my out-of-state uh, viewers here. Pricing is a little bit ridiculous, and I wish they'd stop doing that. Uh, they do have porta pots spaced various in various locations around the property too, but they do have full bathhouses with showers and everything. So they have those at least. They also have group sites. So this is up here coming up. This is group site one. Good size site. Obviously costs quite a bit more than just a regular camper site. I don't know what the pricing is, but you can see lots of room. Shared fire pit. And you got a, a couple of regular size sites on this side of it. This is all in the back uh, the back corner, which is where I am. That's why the sites are off of the two hundreds up here. There isn't over there isn't two hundred sites here. Just the way they've got them numbered. I think they got some sites up in the three hundreds too. Not a bad little site there, it just goes on and on towards the back. Another access way to the group site. Site like 220 over here, kind of muddy. The sites have the same basic amenities here picnic table, fire pit, grill, water spigot. There are a few sites that have electric hookups too, I've noticed. Not many, but a few. I think there are six more dollars a night, at least for the inst for the, for the people Massachusetts residents. Uh, I think 44 will we'll verify the price for the out of staters. 43 is nice. Nice big site there. Plenty of places to uh, pull a van in for a level spot. Some of the roads are a little rough and narrow through this campground, but they do have pavement on them for the most part. This is one of those uh, older sections, I guess. A pretty good sized campground overall though. It takes a while to walk the whole loop on it here. Uh, which is all I'm doing tonight here. I'm just gonna walk the bit the main loop. And we'll head back to my campsite and settle in for the evening. An interesting looking tree stump. Those little trees growing out of the big tree. Look at that. Of course, the downside to being in a campground this close to civilization is that uh, this, this house is just outside the perimeter edge of the uh, campsites. Well, the campground here, as you can see right up here, is a, probably can't see them too well through this wide-angle lens, like you. <laughs> but there are definitely some houses back there. Site 54 is not a bad one. A little close to 53, but otherwise pretty good size, nice and level. Nice and quiet over here. Might give this side of the campground a try the next time I come through here. I don't know yet. We'll see. I think the next time I come here won't be in the same site. Part of the reason why I'm walking around to see what other sites there are out there. One of the several trash and recycling areas. Also got a little basketball court here and a park over there too. Playground area. 
Sorry, I'm not stopping too much to look at things here because I'm running out of light fast, as you can probably tell in the video here. <laughs> uh, let me get back to my campsite before, before I lose all the light because I didn't bring any flashlights with me. Duh. <laughs> Smart move. So, so it's just a quick, quick look around. Definitely not a, not a full tour. All right, we're getting towards the front side of the campground now. Starting to see uh, the main road over there with some traffic on it. What side is this one? Let's say 59. Don't mind the road noise. There's a nice big flat, flat level site that you can take, and it does have a water spigot. more sights. So this one's pretty nice. Yeah, 63. We're right on the pond over here. Ooh. Didn't expect to see that. <laughs> uh, anyway, <laughs> I didn't bring my uh, camera with the telephoto lens with me. Uh, we'll bridge out here to get at the pond. Wow, not bad. Not bad at all, actually. It's kind of a pretty area. Okay, there's that playground that's on the other side of that little basketball court area. Oh, it just cuts through to the other side of the road over here. Site 68 is kind of interesting. A little slope up, but then it's nice and quiet in that space, except it's right next to the playground. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of takes away from some of it, but oh well. We got several nice sites here that are right along the little pond over here. And of course, right on the other side of the pond is the main road, so you're going to have some traffic noise, but it's not too bad. It's a fairly quiet road. Really starting to get too dark for the camera, but here's site 15. Actually, a decent amount of solar charging on that site, and it looks pretty level too. So that could be a good site. A little bit of, in, in a little bit of a quiet area too, which is good. The recycling bin. And back into some of the more populated areas again. So good morning. Just uh, getting up here, getting ready to make myself some uh, coffee at the moment. Just doing the pour through coffee maker again. Yeah, it seems to work in, when I'm just doing the stuff inside the van. First, we gotta heat up some water, as usual. Some extra water in there because we're gonna have some oatmeal for breakfast too. Oh, that should be plenty, I hope. Always go in right. <laughs> anyway, oh. all right. So had a good night's sleep last night. There, I actually sleep. Uh, <laughs> interestingly enough, uh, sometimes I sleep better in this bed than I do in the uh, bed at home. Go figure. But slept good. Good night's sleep there. I did put a cover over that new window there that I've got there because uh, last time I came here and the sun came up the light was kind of bright under the window. So we're going to move fairly quickly this morning here. We're going to have my coffee and we're going to have my breakfast because I actually have to get to work. So <laughs> believe it or not. So a little, a little different configuration on this trip. But we're going to get up to uh, a job uh, doing some of my IT support type stuff. So we got to be ready for that. Anyway, I'll talk to you in a few minutes. I am struggling with trying to find the right settings here for the uh, lighting here. Because I got the uh, I have the lamp on, the outside windows, things like that. I was seen that way there with all the light behind me. And I realized fine, I just use the uh, natural light to my advantage here. So now I've turned myself around here and I'm in, got the two windows in front of me. <laughs> uh, and I can look out the window while I'm having my coffee too. It's perfect. Uh, Chance here, there we go. 
Absolutely perfect. There we go. I'm just relaxing in the van for a few minutes here before I get dressed and head on outside. Got a few things I gotta take down, put away, and that's about it. I still got a, uh, about an hour and a half before I have to leave the campground here for the get to work on time. But uh, like I said, I'm just gonna do a simple bowl of oatmeal, so I'm not gonna probably not gonna bother putting that on uh, on video while I make that. And uh, I'll get up, put the lights away, things like that. I had that string of lights that I put out. I can put that away. I gotta put my chair away. Take the weather station down. That's about it. So not uh, not too much I have to pack up here. The nice thing about having this fan here, yeah, I gonna make sure all my drawers are secure so they don't open while I'm driving. And take window covers down and uh, uh, away I go. So anyway, all right, I'll be back. Yeah, I know. I'm in Ma a Massachusetts State Park and I'm wearing a New Hampshire hat. <laughs> Yeah, I've, that's all I had in the back of the van at the time, so, and since I'm going almost directly to a job here, uh, and couldn't quite get my, my hair clean, combed out and everything else to make myself look a little bit more professional, not that I ever really look professional, but make myself look a little more, more professional there, I decided uh, I'll just throw the hat on, <laughs> it'll be fine. Anyway, you can see here we're all packed up, we've got everything put away here. It's all cleaned up there. Took the lights down, took the weather station down already. <sighs> nice little sight for the night here. Uh, definitely too short of a trip still. <laughs> but it was fun just coming out here for one night. There sure are a lot of birds here though. <laughs> and I unfortunately didn't have time to play with that Merlin app this time here because I had to, had to take off here, but it was a fun trip. So anyway, Time to get to work here. Just strange thinking about that, but <laughs> so I'll say uh, thanks for watching. Remember, slow down and enjoy life and birds, lots of birds, and we'll talk to you guys later.